It's 7.02, I'll get the meeting started. This is a uh, Town of Norton Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for April 14, uh, 2021. Uh, we have a full agenda, so we'll get to it in a second. First, a couple of um, procedural announcements, personnel announcements. Um, Unfortunately, but uh, fortunately for the town, um, Alan Bully is no longer going to be a CBA member because he was elected by the uh, town of Norton to um, join the planning board in our election on Saturday. Alan, I see, is, um, is listening in to us tonight, but is not showing his face because he doesn't want to, uh, um, he doesn't want us to get all teary eyed at his departure from our board. I just but, wanted uh, to say hi. Okay, thanks. There he is. <laughs> Alan, uh, we appreciate, on behalf of all of us on the Congrats, board, Alan. I appreciate you. your service, Alan, uh, over the last uh, couple of years with us as an alternate member and, and joining us, you know, for votes when we, uh, when we needed that. Thank you very much for your assistance and participation. And the town is um, <laughs> a great new planning board member in uh, Mr. Bully. I thank you. I learned a lot from you. Good luck to you, and um, hey, we're still on the same town, so yes, sir. still on the same, still on the same team. You're just, uh, you just can't, uh, can't vote with us anymore. I'm on um, the other uh, side. <laughs> thanks, Alan, for all your help. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Alan. Thank you. So with us tonight, uh, we have uh, David Wren, uh, myself, Tom Noel, and I am looking for Jim Tenori. Mr. Tenori is here identified. Um, there he is, uh, holding his hand up. He is also with us. And um, um, Mr. Wren, Mr. Tenori, and I will be the voting members on any votes that take part tonight. Um, we are holding this meeting uh, by remote participation means, as they call it, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and under the uh, governor's Governor Baker's emergency orders of March 2020 and onward, also the emergency orders of the town of Norton um, beginning in March 2020 and onward. Uh, with reasonable access uh, being provided to our participants, meaning the applicants, anybody uh, wanting to take part in the meeting, and um, um, any member of the public wanting to look in on the meeting as well. Uh, the meeting will be uh, posted, the video and audio of the meeting will be posted on the Norton Media Center website um, within the next uh, day or two. And, and you can go to uh, review the meeting there at any time. That is also on our uh, posted agenda for tonight. With that Mr. out Chairman. of the way, I'm sorry? Mr. Chairman, it's uh, David. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, question of, question of um, order, I guess. Um, so my intent, I guess I'm wondering, is Alan eligible to participate this evening? Um, and I asked that question because my intention was to recluse myself from one of the matters tonight, so. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> Alan, I think, is not on our board anymore. Alan, is that your understanding? I wasn't sure to begin with. If I would have known, I would have not recused my, I would have not accepted until after tonight's meeting. <laughs> but you were sworn in for the planning board. Not yet. Not yet. I have not been sworn in, no. Okay. Um, I have accepted, but I have not been sworn in. Uh, that's like saying you're getting married without setting a date. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Mr. Wren, David, which item were you going to refuse yourself on? Or are yeah, you if you remember, if you recall, Mr. Chairman, it was actually, I thought it was going to be the last meeting, but it was, uh, it was the first matter uh, <laughs> taking place. Got it. And you did speak to me about this, and I forgot about that completely. So, Alan, um, Ms. Mr. Waziak, our other alternate member, is uh, delayed for some time tonight, probably till 8 o'clock or after. So I, I guess I dismissed Alan prematurely from our board. <laughs> he hasn't been sworn into the planning board yet. He is still on our board as far as I understand. I understand the bylaws. Uh, we, will, uh, we will go with uh, Mr. Um, Bully and um, Mr. Chinore and myself on the first item, zero tipping place. That was the item, right, David? That is correct. 
Okay. Um, I think we need to check in with Paul because I'm pretty sure, and Alan, correct me, I'm pretty sure since he accepted, um, Paul checked on this and he can't vote. So let me just reach out to Paul real quick if that's okay with you. Uh, that is okay, but uh, we'll have to go to some other business in the meantime, uh, which is fine. Let's see if we can get an answer from Mr. DiGiuseppe. Um, I saw that email, but I, I assumed he had been sworn in, and I think that's the, I think that's the uh, fulcrum. But let's uh, let's take a second just to review. Then tonight we have uh, three items. Um, first, uh, zero tipping place. Then zero Knollwood Street at seven ten. So we can start that in a couple of minutes if we have to. Uh, and then at scheduled for 715, we have variants for 30 Keith Drive. We have to wait till the appointed times to start them. Then after that, uh, scheduled for eight o'clock is a continued comprehensive permit for 253 Mansfield Avenue to construct 60 unit rental apartment building, uh, followed by uh, at least at 805, it'll be uh, sometime after that, an executive session that I will call to discuss a uh, pending litigation, a pending litigation matter involving the town. Uh, and town council, Amy Quessel, will be joining us, though she is at another meeting right now um, for, I think, another town. Um, so we can't uh, get her involved in this discussion either. So I think what we're going to do is um, wait another minute and maybe discuss some other general business. Uh, but then do uh, zero Knollwood Street if Nicole is not back to us with Mr. Giuseppe or town council. Town council is not on yet, correct? I do not see her here. Correct. All right. Um, hey, Tom, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Paul said that Lucia, our town clerk, said that Alan is now a planning board member as he accepted and he can't be on ZBA, so he can't vote. He is no longer a member. Okay. All right. That, that settles that. Alan, uh, we'll say thanks again and uh, so long, farewell at, at Frieder Zane and all of that. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for checking. Uh, town council will be joining us uh, shortly anyway, we can clarify. Um, so for this matter, um, let me call it first. Uh, property address is zero tipping place. For the record, it's 709 uh, right now. Anyway, zero tipping place. The applicant owner is, I believe, the Howard James, or is that James Howard uh, trustee, uh, represented by attorney Peter Clark. Uh, Mr. Clark, you're with us, correct? Yes, I am, Ms. Mill. Okay. And Mr. Wren? Um, yes. Did you uh, need to recuse yourself from the matter? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, therefore, I will um, appoint um, Mr. Tenoy. Uh, <coughs> however, we are then uh, short with just two members uh, of a third voting member. Mr. Wasiak is not going to be with us. Mr. Noel, do you want to do an extension to hear this? Hold on. I'm Mr. Wozniak is not going to be with us till at least eight o'clock. He didn't give a firm time, though. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you do you want to hang around for the next either you know thirty to sixty minutes, or would you ask to be put off to the next meeting date? I'm sorry to ask you this at this time. We didn't anticipate all these different. E e either one at the uh, at the pleasure of the board, at the pleasure of the chairman. Well, I'm, I'm asking you if you want to uh, stick around, you can. If not, I, I would ask you to um, give us um, an extension. I don't know where we are with regard to the 100-day rule, you know, having to render a decision. I would need to ask you uh, to grant an extension of the 100-day rule till, I don't know, May 30th, we'd have to say. Uh, and then to follow up with some writing to us to that effect. Um, so I, I, um, since, since you don't know, you know what time, uh, you know your your uh, all, your alternate member will be there. Uh, let's extend it um, until what did you say May thirtieth? Did you say? Well, when is our meeting in May, Nicole? I believe it's. Uh, I think it's May twelfth. 
It is May yes. 12th. May 12th, thank you. Uh, it is May 12th, Mr. Clark. So uh, what I'm saying is I don't have exactly when your application arrived. We have to under statute, uh, you know, I'm aware decision within 100, 100 days of the application date, whenever that was, and to the extent that we're bumping into that, I assume we are. Um, would you extend that right now verbally till say through May of 2021, just to give us some breathing room there? Sure. Uh, well, um, the, on behalf of the applicant, we'll extend until um, uh, Monday, um, uh, Monday, May 31st. <clears throat> Let's say through Monday, May 31st. I don't know what the holiday is anyway, but um, okay. And that's a verbal request. Would you? And, and, uh, and I'll, I'll get something over to Nicole tomorrow. Yeah, just a, a writing that we can put in the record to that effect. It's obviously on record tonight. Um, let me ask um, Mr. Tenore, uh, do you agree? Uh, would you vote to accept this extension, uh, Mr. Tenore? Yes, I would. Okay, and I would, uh, I vote to accept that extension as well. Uh, David, you've recused yourself on the matter, so I won't ask you, and Mr. Pooley's no longer on the board. I apologize, Mr. Clark, for the, uh, we didn't know that one of our members had higher aspirations than the zoning board. Yeah. Uh, we would have been good uh, with Alan um, um, uh, still with us tonight. Okay. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm not I'm not sure if the planning board is a place of higher aspiration. Okay, well, that's a good point. But um, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. I appreciate that. We we are higher <laughs> on the ladder, I'm sure, than the planning board. No one had to elect us, though. They just sort of pointed at us and said, "You're on." Uh, but okay, Mr. Clark, uh, May twelfth. It's actually only I think one, two. Oh, it is it is four weeks. One, two, three. It is four weeks from tonight. May twelfth is our next meeting. That, that's fine. And we'll is it put that, you that, on same time, seven o'clock? We'll put you on for 7 p.m. and please follow up with a written request just to cover our, our I, I, I will get that, I'll email the Nicole tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. All right, have a good evening, folks. So okay. we are going to, we are going to, uh, thank you, you too. We are therefore going to put zero tip in place. Um, well, I've opened it. Um, I, is there a motion, Jim, to um, move zero tip in place to the uh, next meeting on May 12th at 7 p.m.? I'll make that motion to move to 7 p.m. I will um, I will second the motion. There are only two of us able to vote, but assuming procedural is legal with two members, uh, how do you vote on that motion, Mr. Tenore? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. So the meeting is, the hearing on zero tipping place will be continued to May 12, <coughs> 7 p.m. Please make a note, um, um, Ms. Uh, Salvo. Okay. Let's move on now. It is uh, 7.15 for the record. We'll go on to zero. No with three. This is uh, application for property marked as zero. No with three. The applicant owner, Philip Ibrahim. The Deborah Ibrahim uh, trustee. Uh, apparently a trust owns the property. Uh, um, sitting on this will be myself, Mr. Tenori, and I assume Mr. Wren, you are all set to sit on this hearing? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, we will be the voting members. Who is here to present for the applicant, Mr. Ibrahim, or the trust or trustee? My name is Philip Ibrahim, and I am here present, sir. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, something that was put on for last month uh, due to some noticing error uh, with the uh, newspaper. We didn't publish it in time and we had to put it off uh, until this meeting. Uh, we will take it up at this point. For, um, for the record, um, at the last meeting also, um, we uh, conducted a, uh, there was a request for some records from 2006 to 2008. We had to schedule an executive session at, uh, at that time, at that meeting. We did hold that session after the close of the public meeting uh, to discuss those records and whether they would be released. I can, I can report that the uh, board in executive session voted to maintain the confidentiality of those records. So there were no records to release. Um, I can tell you that there was nothing, nothing I don't think would have been surprising to anybody, but the board felt that they were 
attorney-client confidence and um, um, voted to maintain their confidentiality. Um, with that said, um, I will recount that this matter was before us and in fact uh, was the topic of a decision, um, I believe in 2008, um, asking for, I think, the same relief. Mr. Ibrahim, would you uh, take us through uh, what occurred to bring us uh, to this night? Sure. I, um, I went, attended an auction at, that the town of Norton had held. And uh, as a younger man, I purchased this property in hopes to in, invest for the future of myself and my family. I spent nearly $100,000 buying the property. And I had spoken to the building inspector at the time. He said, this is a very nice piece of property. Uh, it should just need a routine variance and you should be good to go to build uh, something reasonable there. So uh, I filled out the paperwork and showed up at a meeting. In fact, uh, I walked in the door and at the time there was a large mob of people and I didn't understand why. I thought they were looking at some big developer or something. And uh, I got up not having ever been I think to a ZBA meeting in my life and said, Hey, I'd like to put a single family house here. Could you give me a variance? And a whole bunch of people from the neighborhood jumped up and down and, and, and made a fuss. And some of the things they were saying were ludicrous. One person said, uh, traffic. And I couldn't understand, but I was just dumbfounded and didn't know anything. So I walked out with my twit tail between my legs. Um, economy got a little tough. And I got a mortgage on the property to kind of keep my uh, family afloat. And I paid off that mortgage over the last decade or so. And my 14 year old daughter said, dad, what are you going to do with that land? I said, well, if somebody in his family would like to fill out the paperwork, I'd like to ask the town for permission to do the variance. And my 14 year old said, what's a variance? And then she learned everything about variances. I wish she was here presenting instead of me. She knows more about it than I do. Well, well, you're doing fine. Out, thank you. She filled out all the paperwork herself, and here we are. Okay. This Probably. property is depicted on plans uh, submitted. Uh, you are a, a, an engineer, a land surveyor or engineer? No, that's my father. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My father's a mechanical electrical engineer for the last 50 years in the city of Boston and has touched just about every building you could possibly imagine in the area. He does structural work. He does some land work. And when I was a young child, we went and surveyed the uh, in Brockton together uh, as, a, as a 10 or 12 year old. I held the sticks. Okay. Um, this, he is not a uh, land surveyor. He's a, uh, a professional engineer with a PE stamp. Ibrahim and Ibrahim Consulting Engineers, and he has okay. the plans. Okay. Um, regardless, the map is um, is titled Knollwood Street. It's um, dated March 23 of 2019, but it's actually a, uh, it looks like it's taken from a, a, a city map, a plan sheet. Is that a planning board map? It's a map that was provided by the town. That is correct. It's the same uh, one that was applied with uh, before, and he just uh, made some adjustments to move the house farther back in so that the house would not be uh, too close to anybody else and there'd be a significant buffer, almost 60 feet if you look at the map. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. So it shows a, a lot. And the issue here is uh, that there is 30 feet of frontage on, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, Knollwood Street. Uh, hence, the house does not have a number. It's titled Zero Knollwood. There, it shows a house in the middle of the lot, um, 60 feet off of the side yard boundaries and 60 feet off of the backyard of the um, the nearby lots toward the front, I'll put it that way. And that is my intention to leave the, uh, the buffers in place so that uh, there would be continuous privacy in every direction. Okay. Um, members, you have the map um, in the file, regardless of whether it's a, a properly certified map uh, by, a, by a land surveyor, licensed land surveyor, um, you heard the testimony uh, we can we can look at this and decide uh, later, you know, whether a, the, any further uh, map is is required. Um, the problem here is that there is 30 feet of frontage on Knollwood with 
Uh, it looks like the 30 feet strip is maintained at 30 feet going in back of the two other properties. Is that right, Mr. Ibrahim? Yes, that is correct, sir. 30 feet all the way up, in other words, till it. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this came before us in, I believe, 2006, and um, we eventually rendered a uh, decision uh, denying variance relief. Um, this is a lot in the R80 zone, uh, which requires 80,000 square feet and 150 feet of frontage. Uh, there is uh, plenty of square, uh, actually, no, I'm wrong. There's 77,000 uh, square feet, so it is an undersized lot in an R80 zone. And it also is um, lacking frontage. Instead of 150 feet on the street, there is 30 feet. Um, Can I address that for a moment? Yes, go ahead. So this lot is grandfathered in every way uh, f f with respect to um, it having never been in conjunction with another lot from prior to the zoning. So at that time, uh, this, the, the, the state of Massachusetts allows for this lot to be buildable if just the frontage was 50 instead of 30. And if you look at the way the lot is laid out, a developer from the 60s would have not known that they needed 50 feet to, to continue that. So they would have put in just enough feet to put in a reasonable driveway. And so um, if but for the fact that it's 30 instead of 50 feet, this lot would be a, a grandfathered lot and, and buildable. So what I'm asking for is the zoning to go. It, it should be 50 feet. It's 30. So the, the difference is what I'm looking for. Well, the, the zoning now requires 150 feet. So it's, I think it's 150 feet down to 30 that's being requested. The grandfathering of the lot, uh, the lot exists there. Um, and however, and whenever it was laid out, there was nothing constructed on it, correct? There's no home there now. Correct, but the, the zoning in Massachusetts says if a lot was not contiguously owned and broken off later mm -hmm. prior to zoning, then it would be buildable as of right, if it had had 50 feet instead of 30. Yes, correct. That's what that's I was referring small, to. That's under the small lot exception, I think. Correct. Section correct. 13. And this far exceeds that's all the other lots on. in the area by almost four to one. Hold on, Mr. Ibrahim. I, I, I got what you're saying. I got Good. your point and, and the argument. Um, I'd like to continue uh, a little bit with the recitation of what happened. We denied the application for variance and the zoning board denied it in uh, 2008, I believe, or two, perhaps that was in 2006. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim uh, appealed that to the Superior Court, as was his right. And then um, there was a, um, a dismissal of that case uh, in 2008. Is that correct, Mr. Ibrahim? I withdrew the case. Sorry? I withdrew the case, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was withdrawn in 2008. Understood. Correct. Yep. I, I withdrew it. I, I thought it would be more polite to come back at a later date. And then I had some other things in life happen and uh, I waited patiently and here I am. So that was the, uh, that was the subject of the executive session with council in 2008 at the point that case ended. That was the point of our discussions about what to uh, do and what to accept uh, with uh, by right of uh, withdrawal of the uh, Superior Court case. Um, we did, uh, the board did assent to the withdrawal of the case at the later, uh, at a later date uh, through counsel, of course. Um, and Mr. Ibrahim has filed what I think is the same, uh, asking for the same relief as, as before. Um, Members, do you have questions at this point of the applicant, Mr. Tenori, Mr. Um, and um, I don't think I have any currently. Um, Mr. Tenori, uh, please raise your hand or speak up if you do. Uh, this was not, there was never a house on that lot, correct, Mr. Ibrahim? No, sir, not to the best of my knowledge. Okay. Approximately when was that auction that you're referring to? It would have been the end of 2005 or 2006, right at about the time I, I made the application <clears throat> within a month or so after I, I purchased it. Okay. 
Um, so at the time, uh, you state that a, a building inspector commented to you that he thought it would, <clears throat> it would get a variance. Uh, do you know who that building inspector was? To be honest with you, I don't remember his name. Um, he was the inspector for many years in, in, in the town, so he probably would have been well known. Okay. But I don't remember his name. He was there for years. The, the, the problem that I have is that the inspector <laughs> is not, in, I mean, one goes to the building inspector to get a building permit. So somebody in the inspector's office, uh, I've got to assume, referred you to the zoning board in 2006 to apply for a variance. At that point, it was the zoning board's jurisdiction. And the zoning board, as I said, uh, decided to uh, uh, deny the variance. Um, based on a couple of things, um, the, the uh, serious deficiency in frontage, and I understand the applicant is saying it was 50 feet when the lot was formed. I don't believe that's the date that we look at, however. The lot was acquired in 2006, and <clears throat> frankly, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, you could have obtained the legal opinion at that time um, as to whether it was buildable or not, and an applicant is not entitled to, uh, well, let's put it this way, an applicant has to establish to the board um, reasons why variance um, should be granted. Um, there are three criteria for variances, and we had decided at that time that the three criteria were not met. Um, I had in the file, and I believe this is from the 2006 uh, file, not the present file, a photo taken from the street. Is this the, uh, I know it's not great doing this, holding it up. Is this the lot uh, opening the 30 feet that you are referring to, Mr. I have, I have, to, I cannot see it at this moment, but give me a moment. Uh, that looks about right. Okay. So your entrance is between those two uh, residences that are pictured here, correct? That sounds about right, yes. Okay. Um, at the time, there was opposition from, uh, I believe, these two residents and also from some other abutters. Uh, members, do you have other questions for the applicant at this time? I don't at this time, no. Can I just mention a few hold things? On. Well, hold on, Mr. Wren, do you have any questions? No, I do not, Ms. Kim. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Ibrahim. I appreciate very much, you know, all people having a neighborhood and wanting to leave it the way it is, but, you know, the town did sell it at the time, and I believed at the time, and, and still believe today, that a property that's at least three or four times larger than all of the other houses uh, lots in the area is reasonable to put a single family home on it. And, you know, we do have a housing crisis in our country and people would like to live someplace. Uh, I bought it because I believe that to be true from the town. And it has four times a lot of any of the surrounding lots. Um, there's no uh, reason why <laughs> one can be able to put a driveway in there uh, and, and put a house 60 feet set back so it doesn't bother anybody and have a reasonable outcome for all involved. And I think that zoning relief is there for this type of lot that's not standard. Uh, it was standard at the time in the 60s and obviously the world changed around it. And I made the investment in that property with that belief. It's a hardship for me to make that kind of investment, hold on to it for all these years, expecting someday to have something good and not be able to put a house on. I recently, you know, uh, need to use that property and would like to put a house on. Understood, and thank you. Uh, are, is there anybody else uh, in the uh, in the audience with us tonight to speak in favor of the application or in opposition to the application? Please uh, raise your hand. Uh, I, Mr. Kitchen, I recognize Mr. Kitchen. Can you state your name and address for the record? Sure. My name is John Kitchen. I live at 9 Knollwood Street with my family. Um, that lot, um, 9 Knollwood Street, immediately abuts this property on two sides. Um, 
I have an, a number of things I want to comment on, but I, I'll, I'll try to be brief, um, to be respectful of people's time. Well, is it is one of the properties abutting the proposed driveway? Yes, um, that picture that you showed is my, is a picture I took um, 15 years ago, um, and my house is on the right. Okay, thank you. Um, Go so, ahead briefly. So, so a, a few few items I'll touch on briefly. One, I think, as you've mentioned, the intent of this bylaw is pretty clear. Um, there, there's relief for certain cir circumstances um, in the bylaw. This is extreme, even compared to that relief. Um, the impact on this neighborhood is is significant. You can see this, I don't know, maybe 11 properties that touch this lot. Um, with respect to grandfathering, I know I asked the question and I didn't get the, the answer um, from the town, but I think that lot 259-1 was subdivided sometime after the 60s. So this property has not been the same, I don't believe, since the 60s. I think the 60s, that was all one lot. Um, the location we live in is environmentally sensitive. It's an area of critical environmental concern. It's a sole source aquifer. It's a water resource protection district. It's in a zone two. Um, our existing infrastructure is strained. Um, just with the development we have, uh, Knollwood becomes a river when it rains. Um, we don't have enough stormwater infrastru infrastructure to retain the development we have. Um, it, this property has been built out for five decades. This, this neighborhood has been built out for five decades. This isn't, you know, adding on to some recent development. Um, people had a reasonable, uh, reasonable expectations to think that this the zoning of this lot would be maintained. Um, I know the proponent um, indicated that he spoke to a building inspector. I will say I spoke with every every office in town hall in 2006, and I didn't receive any answer similar to that. Um, the answer he got. Um, if not, I was there at the auction. Our neighbors were there at the auction. We had done our due diligence and we made a decision based upon what we were told. Um, so I, I do think that the hardship we have here is self-imposed. Um, and, and, and I feel bad that somebody's in that situation, but I do think it's self-imposed. Uh, and I think to conclude, nothing's changed since 2006. Uh, we had a unanimous decision in 2006, and, and I really don't see any circumstances that have changed. Uh, with that, um, I thank the uh, board for their time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kitchen. Uh, is there anybody else to speak in favor of or, <clears throat> excuse me, or in opposition to the application? Raise your hand. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is it? Could you identify yourself by name and address for the record? Um, Nicole, well, no, leave, leave up the map. That's fine. Go ahead, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, uh, this is Robert Holmes um, at uh, 12 Norwood Street, Norton, Mass. That the picture was um, taken from my front yard. Uh, so I'm directly across from the, um, the 30 foot access road. Uh, I, I'm, I'm opposed to it. Um, and, you know, it, it the, some of the way that it was described that um, the mob and the traffic, and I don't know if you ever got a copy of the letter that he had sent to the neighborhood. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but I also felt that that was not the most um, favorable letter because he mentioned something about low income housing going in. So it, I'm just opposed to it completely and nothing has changed since, la since the last time either. And I was at the last meeting also. I didn't go to the auction, but I was at the last town hall meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Yes, Mr. Is it Belcher? Yes. Did you say, state your name and address for the record? I'm William Belcher. I live at 11 Norwood Street. I live right next door, right above the property that he's trying to have the variance for. Go ahead. Um, basically, I'm looking, I don't really want the traffic to go up inside of my house. Um, also, environmentally, um, I do not want you know, obviously any of the land to get construction on and um, privacy alone is what I'm looking at. Because when I bought this property, um, it did not have a house on it, out back, I should say. And that's what I continue to want. That's the reason why I bought here in this neighborhood of Norton. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me ask something, uh, whoever, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, or I'll ask you first, what is lot 25901 on the map that's on the screen? 
property. Do you know who owns that? I do not. When I purchased the property from the town, the property that was sold to me was two fifty nine. dollars uh, I believe that that is uh, probably owned by the town and they uh, it's been that way since probably the 70s. Well, I see, I, I can't tell if it's a separate lot or the same lot uh, that's uh, marked as lot 35 that has uh, uh, access to Kensington Road. So I'm just wondering if the, that's one lot that... No, they're separate lots. They're separate lots, you believe? Yes, okay. sir. I see there are wetlands there, apparently, uh, you know, divided. Just to give you context, that, that area there is hundreds of feet long, not a hundred, hundreds of I feet see. long. Understood. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else to speak in favor or in opposition? I would like to respond when um, sorry. everyone's finished. Sorry, hold on one moment, please. Uh, is that Mr. Martin? If you can uh, unmute your mic, if you'd like to speak, identify yourself by name and address, please. Do you know how to unmute the mic? It's uh, probably down. Yes, yeah, so did I unmute it? Can you you did me? now. Yeah, go ahead. What's your name and address? My name is uh, Martin Flynn. I live at 14 Norwood Street uh, next to uh, Mr. Holmes. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, frontage allowance. It's supposed to be 150, and it allows for exceptions down to 50 feet. And there are four exceptions. You have to meet all four exceptions, which this does not meet. But even if he did, that would take it down to 50. To get it down to 30, you would not only have to give him the exception, you'd have to give them an exception to the exception. And that was, that was a very bad precedent. There's probably a lot of lots in Norton with very small uh, street frontage. And if you go down to 30 feet, before you know it, there'll be people with 20 feet, 15 feet coming in asking for variances. So I think it'd be a very bad uh, precedent. Yeah. Another thing, I've, I'm an individual only. I've lived here for 51 years. And when this development was built, there were a lot of failed septic systems and a lot of uh, flooded basements. And the town put in uh, some uh, drainage and they put in sewerage. And that particular area is a low-lying area of trees and vegetation. And if you put a uh, impervious surface over it, it may well cause additional uh, water problems for all your butters. Well, so for those reasons, I oppose this uh, variance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ibrahim, you wanted to respond, I believe. Um, one other person has their hand up. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's Karen. She's I, been with a little bit. Okay, I'll go to Mr. Ibrahim since I put him off. Um... No, no problem. Thank you. Um, if this really was a low area, which it is not, it would have showed up on this map. This is a GIS map that shows the only area that has anything is up by lot 35, which is hundreds and hundreds of feet away from where we're talking about. The second is, if it really was a low-lying area, both of the houses on either side of the driveway wouldn't have been able to be built. And if you look at the picture that you have, it's not even close. So this is just a group of people that live in the neighborhood that I'm sure are lovely people and every day on Sunday, but now that somebody wants to put a house in, they're coming up with every excuse under the book to tell me why they shouldn't have a house when this is a beautiful piece of property, almost two acres, almost two acres, almost four times as big as the closest one. And the danger that they don't understand, which I wrote to them in the letter, was quite simple. I want to put a single family home conscientiously built, and I asked them for their support, conscientiously built 60 feet away from the, from the sidelines so that it doesn't bother anybody. Somebody could come in, buy any of these side uh, touching properties, have enough frontage and do a 40B with eight or 12 properties on it. And if I put a single on it, that'll never happen. There's such a short-sighted thought when we have a housing crisis in this country and we have good hardworking people that are willing to invest. If you, Mr. Kitchen, went to every town office at the time, you could have prevented this from being sold. The fact that the town chose to sell it for $100,000 meant that there was some future for this property. Otherwise, the town would have just kept it. There's no reason for this stuff. We should be working together. We're Americans, we have neighborhoods, we should be doing a nice job in our neighborhoods, and I'd like to put a nice house on that property. If you can tell me one reason why having one more single home in this large neighborhood 
would cause a detriment, then our whole town is kaput. Don't tell me your infrastructure can't handle one house. Hey, uh, Mr. Abraham, I'd ask you to uh, address the uh, address the chair, address the board. I'm not going to have a back and forth. I, I, I agree, appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, hold on. Uh, people are here, obviously, because they don't want the construction. I, the board is aware of that. Uh, we're not uh, giving uh, countenance to all of the reasons or uh, any of the reasons. We are looking at uh, gathering information from people, including yourself, and making a decision under the bylaw. Um, but it's obvious that they don't want the house there. They enjoy having the woods there for whatever reason out back. Um, um, so we, we, nice understand, we understand your frustration uh, nice as to why the town sold it. I don't know. It was put at an auction and I don't, I wasn't there. I don't know the bidding process and that's not part of our consideration at this point anyway. Um, board member, I'm sorry. Was it Ms. Barubi? Barubi? Barubi. Yes. Um, could you state your name and address for the record? Yes, sir. Um, Karen and Ken Berube. Uh, we are abutters. We live at 7 Knollwood Street. Um, we are opposed to this variance. Um, we purchased our home back um, 40 years ago, and we were told that the land behind us was unbuildable, and I didn't know of any access um, on our street. There was an access on another street, Kendall Park, but not on Knollwood. We were never advised of that when we purchased our home but i just wanted to say that we are opposed to it and we are our brothers okay thank, thank you. you thank you thank you as to you know what expectations were it seems expectations kind of uh cancel each other out here you know everybody uh purchases or doesn't purchase or builds or doesn't build according to the laws in effect at the time um and that's what uh that's what everybody that's what's we have to rely on, society has to rely on. Um, I appreciate the comments from the Butters and from Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, board members, uh, do you have questions of anybody, Mr. Ibrahim, the applicant, or any of the Butters, uh, David or uh, Jim? I'm good at this point right now. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I don't, well, I, I, I guess I have one question. I'm, um, and it's, um, I guess I can address to Mr. Ibrahim. Um, so you were looking for the variance on, on the application notes uh, 6.3. Um, and I guess I was looking for clarification of what, what, well, I guess, I guess I'm unclear as whether or not that's applicable or not to this, this variance request. Which is the, uh, Mr. Ibrahim? My understanding is that this property, but for the fact that it had Sorry, less than... Sorry. Go ahead, try again. My understanding is that this property, but for the fact that it didn't have 50 feet, um, upon reliance of council and, and many people that have uh, helped me get this far, uh, would be buildable because it was predating the zoning and, and it is more than 5,000 feet under the small lot. So at, at this point, um, if we can get a variance for the entrance uh, of the property and that you would declare it a buildable lot, I would be more than happy to put a single family home on it. And uh, we would all enjoy the benefits of a new family moving into the neighborhood. 631, David, is that your question, how that applies? Yes. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure either. I mean, we can we could look it up. Um, is that the small lot exception? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand. You know, are we talking about 20 feet? Or are we talking? Uh, well, six three one. Um, I mean, I'll get it out. Um, it is a small lot exception. Um, it applies under very specific circumstances. I remember that. It's when a um, lots are in common ownership, I believe, prior to zoning. Um, I had to prove that when I went before the board that it had not been in common ownership since the time of the prior to the zoning, and I had to prove that it it was it met all of the small lot um, requirements, and and that's why we are here today because it didn't have 50 feet; it only has 30 feet. And frankly, I, I believe there may have been some discrepancy when 
at some point, someone did a, um, a, a large project to remeasure all of the lots in the area. And I thought it may have been at 50 feet at one point, but we weren't able to conclusively prove that it was 50 feet. So now we're accepting that it's 30 feet. There, there is no uh, section bylaw 6.3.1. So I don't yeah. know, David, there's a- yeah, looking at, Well, I guess I'm looking at 6.3. Yeah, 6.3 uh, and then it's AB, a, yeah. ABC, right. Um, yeah. um, to the extent that's what's uh, you know listed on the application. Uh, vacant lot having at least 50 feet frontage and 5,000 square feet area um, prior to the adoption of zoning, not adjoining any other vacant lot or lots may be built upon so as to conform to a minimum side yard of 13 feet minimum. So that that's not applicable um, if the lot or lots in subsection A at the time adjoin other vacant lots they may be built upon within five years from the date of recording of deed or plan establishing the lots that doesn't apply. Um, Non-conforming adjoining lots held in single ownership, part C, shall be combined for building purposes in order to provide a lot that's bigger. Uh, there, it's on screen. You, you can you can see it. Uh, I don't think that applies as to why it's on the application. I'm I'm not sure. I can't speak to that. Um, but I don't think this this applies. These aren't contiguous, undersized lots. There's there's one lot here. We don't know what it was at the time of zoning. The applicant hasn't come to us with that. Um, so I'm not. I don't think six point three applies, and I don't think we have any evidence that it applies. Um, I think the applicant is bringing it up, showing that in some cases fifty feet of frontage is enough. Um, but that would be if there were contiguous lots of, you know, sufficient frontage. There are many unique lots in, in the town and, and in other towns as well. Thank you. In particular no. situation, I, I would say to you that it's, it's a relatively large lot. And if you can build on 5,000 feet with 50 feet of frontage, I would say that you can build on 70,000 feet with only 30 feet of frontage. And when it's all said and done, at the end of this, if you do accept my petition and allow me to build a house, I, I will promise you that I will do everything in my power to make that a beautiful house that's far enough to leave separation for the neighbors. If you'd like to write in something to the decision that requires me to keep a minimum of 35 feet buffer from any sideline without cutting the woods, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to work with whatever it is that we need to work with to keep harmony in our neighborhood but I really feel strongly that it would be completely unfair to take this lot that's almost four times the size of everyone else's lot and hang our hat on something that if this lot was 5,000 feet and 50 feet, we'd be building on it. I think it's really disingenuous to use the zoning to, to, to single me out because I got 70,000 feet in a beautiful neighborhood that only has 20,000 foot lots and they're gonna hang their hat on something that would have been 20 feet if this was a 5,000 square foot lot with with 50 feet of frontage, it'd be built on. No, it wouldn't, sir. Sir, it would not. That applies when there are contiguous lots. That means lots next to each other at the No, I'd like to explain that. I, I actually researched so, that. Well, Mr. Reaper, I'm sorry, but we're not going to debate the bylaw. We have an application for variance under 175 10.3. The variance requirements are as follows. Variance from requirements of the bylaw, meaning 150 foot uh, frontage, um, can be granted where owing to a special condition affecting specifically such partial or parcel or building, but not generally the zoning district, literal enforcement of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, and where desirable relief may be granted without substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the bylaw but not otherwise. That's what 10.3 says. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, members, are there any other questions of the applicant? No, I don't have any. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? I will sec I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, Mr. Tenore, a roll call vote. How do you vote to close the public comment? portion of the hearing. 
Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. And Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Uh, now the board will discuss what's before it, which is an application for a variance for this lot, essentially um, reducing the frontage requirement to 30 feet. Whether it was 50 or 150 feet, uh, we can discuss. Uh, the bylaw, the table clearly says it's 150 feet. Uh, small lot exception, I don't think applies here at all. Um, I know uh, Mr. Ibrahim is correct. I mean, if you read that portion of the bylaw, it allows for some 50 foot lots and specific conditions, but this isn't, this is not those conditions as I see them. Um, members, um, what, what do you think? How do you feel? Well, I'll say it's a very, that's, it's obviously a very uh, significant variance we're talking about here. Um, and, uh, and that's one reason I was asked about the 6.3, because if it's 50, then it's, it's still significant, but um, but one, 30 down to 150 is obviously very significant. And, uh, this is uh, in a zone know. that has a frontage requirement of 150. Right. So it's 150 we start from as far as I, as far as I uh, can determine. Right. Um, the small lot exception isn't, you can't read that into something that it doesn't apply to. Right. In, in my view, um, the board felt um, some years ago that this was uh, uh, too big of a deviation from what was required. Uh, my feeling is that, uh, yes, literal enforcement does involve hardship to the applicant, but it's also something that the applicant uh, bought, brought on himself, although perhaps unwittingly or mistakenly, um, by purchasing the lot at the time on the assumption that he could get a, a variance. So I discount that. Where I have trouble is the third element of the variance, where desirable relief can be granted without substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the bylaw. I mean, the bylaw clearly says it's 150 feet. Um, I don't know of another time we've gone down to 30 feet. Um, perhaps there was one applicant has not made us aware of any, and I don't remember any. Um, I have some concern about 30 feet. Uh, the normal width of a driveway, I don't claim to know, I'm not an engineer, but that's at least 10 or 12 feet. Um, thinking of public safety access, uh, we don't have the fire department in front of us, I realize. But I have some concern with uh, turning radius into a 30 foot uh, frontage, whether it's for a house or any other um, construction. I, I, don't, um, I don't think we have to um, credit comments about, uh, you know, uh, water uh, seepage problems, uh, things of that sort. We don't, we don't, we have those comments in front of us, but we don't have evidence to that effect. Um, but we do have the common sense of you know, turning radius into a strip of land uh, that's only 30 feet wide with two, um, two residences abutting. And the residences are fairly close to that 30 foot strip. One of them is very close. The other is offset to the other side of the lot. But that's my uh, problem with this now. And it was my problem with it, um, you know, a number of years ago when this first came before it. Um, we need a vote. It has to be unanimous in order to grant the variance. Um, but I, I don't think I can vote for this again. Um, I say that with all due respect to Mr. Ibrahim, I, I have respect that he would come and you know, put up a nice house there. And, um, um, but I have problems with derogating from the intent of the bylaw, which was to say we have frontage requirements in a zone and you know, we have to stick to those to some degree. This is not asking for, you know, going from 150 down to 130 feet. This is 30 feet. Um, it's one fifth of what the bylaw uh, requires. Um, so I have a problem with it uh, for that reason. I don't know why the applicant, uh, I, I mean, I'm not asking the public portion is closed, but the applicant appealed this before if he feels he is on firm legal grounds that's a, an avenue uh, for the applicant going forward as well. I don't feel comfortable with this board making a variance uh, determination that down to 30 feet 
even if there is, uh, you know, a mushroom uh, in back of the property to, to place a house within, within bounds, um, we would have to make a variance uh, determination and I think a determination under 1.5e uh, that this would not substantially um, um, be more non-conforming than what's there now. And I think uh, for that reason as well, what's there now is a vacant lot. Putting a house there, if, even if it's a very nice house with one family as it would have to be, I think that's a substantial departure from the non-conforming nature of the lot that's existed over time. Um, we can't put ourselves in the place of what happened at the auction. And um, that's just, uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, but Mr. Wren, Mr. Tenori, I, I'd invite you to, uh, to comment um, as well. I, I just wanted to say, I agree. I think the bylaw was pretty clear and I, and I'm pretty, We've been pretty consistent with that 150 feet on on other applications as well. So um, I think that's a significant reduction. Uh, it's unfortunate the applicant, uh, but I think we'd set a pretty bad precedence if we go down to 30 feet. Go down to 30 feet. Yeah, correct. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Wren. This is just discussion. Yeah, well, I think I agree with both of you. I, I just don't, uh, it's, a, it's a very unfortunate situation, but I, I just don't see how we can give a variance of this degree um, in this situation. I think if the applicant feels that somehow the small lot exception applies, um, he, should, he should make that case legally, um, but uh, I don't believe it does. I don't believe this satisfies the third prong of the, um, of the variance test and I don't believe that I would vote for a finding under 1.5e that this is a pre-existing non-conforming lot. We actually don't have evidence as to when exactly the lot was formed. Uh, we do have evidence as to when the applicant acquired the lot that was clearly after zoning and it was in it was in that configuration then without a house on it. So I don't there's no pre-existing non-conforming use here except that it's an undersized lot. So I don't think we could make a finding under 15E or a um, granting a variance. Uh, is there a motion uh, for uh, or against the uh, grant of a variance? I'm sorry, I lost you for a second. Is there a motion for um, or um, against a variance uh, grant uh, for the applicant uh, per the application that's been presented? I'll make that motion. Well, is it a motion uh, to? To, uh, to uh, not grant. To, de to deny the application for variance? Correct. Okay. Is there a second on that motion? I'll make the, I will second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there any further discussion of this variance uh, application? Um, I've stated my opinion. Uh, uh, is there any further discussion of the variance? A, a yes vote would deny the variance uh, requested. Can I withdraw it? No, I'm sorry. Public session is closed. Mr. Wren, Mr. Tenori, there's a motion on the table. Are you prepared to take a vote? Yes. Yes. Mr. Wren, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well to deny the application for variance presented. Uh, Mr. Abraham, thank you for your um, for your attempt and your participation, and uh, to the abutters as well. Uh, Have a lovely the, evening. The decision will be uh, issued within the uh, within the. Um, 14 uh, calendar days, 10 business days will be posted and then is subject to appeal by any party who feels agreed. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the application for 30 Keith Drive. Uh, Cody Thompson is the applicant. Is Mr. Thompson, is it Mr. Thompson? Yes, uh, Cody Thompson and Calista Thompson, my wife are here. Uh, I see you both. And uh, you're the applicants in this? Yes, sir. This concerns a single family home um, at the address stated in an R80 zoning district. 
Uh, the frontage here, the existing frontage is 64.27 feet as listed on the application. There is a variance request for a set side setback to add an addition on the south side of the property. I suggest, though we will ask the applicant that this would also require 1.5 finding that we were just discussing as a pre-existing uh, non-conforming um, lot with a dwelling on it already. Mr. Uh, Thompson, can you uh, briefly take us through what you're uh, desiring? We have your plan here, which is from Charette Land Surveying, dated March 15, 20, 2021. Right, so um, my wife and I moved to Norton about two years ago. It'll be two years uh, next month. Um, we moved from Texas to be back uh, closer to family, uh, including her grandmother, who will be 90 this year. Um, and uh, during this, you know, COVID time last year, we started looking to potentially build out. We've got a, a pool in the back, which I think is is on the plot plan. Um, and we were looking to originally build out a pool house with hardwood tile, uh, so kids aren't having to run in on on hardwoods while they're still wet, and also have a workout area. Um, and you know after more discussion with her grandmother uh potentially building that out into a bedroom for her to come and live with us um, she does have some health issues and will likely need some assistance with living uh soon and we'd like to have a first floor bedroom available uh if she does take us up on that so um while the original intent was to build it out as a, a pool house and a workout room uh, we'd like to have the availability to build that into a, a bedroom for her uh, if she does decide to come live with us. And so um, well, within the doc, within the documents that we presented, I think I also included a, uh, a quote to tie into the sewer um, so that we're not in, um, that we're five. still in compliance with Title V. Sorry, um, the proposed construction is for a bump out to the south of the house, correct? Correct. The the pool deck that's proposed as well. Yeah. So they there's an existing deck that would have to be taken out as part of the uh, the addition, and so the deck that would go back in, we revised the the layout of it uh, as well. So well, it's it's the addition plus the deck. Does the does the deck extend? into what's drawn as the addition now yes yes there's about a about a two foot section on the south side uh the existing property or the existing deck um runs parallel to the end of the house and goes out almost as far as the existing or as the proposed addition goes out it's about it's about one to two feet shorter than the uh proposed addition okay, would be you're saying it's parallel with the side of the house, right? It, it extends straight back from the corner. So uh, it's more, it's more than 15 feet from the side yard setback. It's not, it doesn't extend south. It extends, uh, west. Yeah. The house though the is house is shown as 16.6 .6 feet from the side yard that I believe that 16 feet was from the, um, from the chimney. Okay, so the deck is further than that from the side yard boundary, right? It would be about, yeah, I think the existing is about 18 feet. Okay. 17 or 18 feet. Well, if it's even with the house, it's going to be right. something like that. Okay. So this, um, the applicant is seeking a variance for uh, this uh, extension to the single family uh, residence that's there now down to 10.89 feet um, on the uh, part of the deck toward Keith Drive, 11.3 feet uh, to the back portion of the uh, proposed addition as shown on the plan of record. Um, it looks like this would uh, need a variance uh, for those dimensions and probably also I think a 1.5 E. This appears to be a uh, undersized lot with undersized um, frontage, uh, the lot size approximately 30 square, 30,000 square feet on a, is that a cul-de-sac? 
Yes. yes. And I believe that, uh, if I may, the, the developer, um, when they built the lots, they had the, the zoning setbacks on the side setbacks set at 15 feet. Um, so there's, I know we're R80, but I yeah. think there was already a, a variance for the development granted at 15 feet. Well, it is, I think that is the side yard setback still. Right. 15. Yes. So that's, that's fine. What you're asking for is, is a reduction in those uh, setbacks on that side. Yes, down, sir. Down to 11 and down to 10.89 as indicated on the plan. Understood. Um, you, you acquired the uh, property a couple of years ago. Yes, sir. Do you know uh, when the uh, house was built? Uh, 99. Okay. Um, well, was there a house there prior to that time? No. Uh, members, do you have questions? And I'm, I'm not sure what to do where the house was actually put in in 99 after zoning. Is this a, this isn't, or is this a pre-existing non-conforming use? It's an existing non-conformance. Yeah, I would, I would say the pre doesn't exist. <laughs> what, uh, I see SP 253. Was this the subject of a special permit when that development was put in, Mr. Thompson? I, I believe that there was a special exception granted for the side setback at 15 feet for the um, for all of the lots in, in the Keith and uh, Keen, Keen uh, neighborhood. Neighborhood. Well, it's not. It's not just that. It's not just the side set. The side setback is fine uh, to the existing house. It's the lot size and the frontage, and that's why I'm just wondering if it's a pre-existing, pre-existing zoning in the 1970s or not. But if there was a special permit that would take care of that, members, yeah, I'm just, I, believe, I, I'm, oh, I believe I'm the entire subdivision was built um, in '98 and '99. Yeah. Prior to that, there were no developments. Yeah. To, to my knowledge, again, we we purchased the home um, in May two years ago. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, is Nick Iafrede with us tonight? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'm sorry, I see you now. Um, this doesn't appear to be a pre-existing non-conforming use. If it's by special permit, though, it got permission to be built, obviously, by the planning board. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how to handle this. I'm not saying that the applicant uh, has to be denied. Uh, I'm just not sure how this falls. Um, I Members, I kind of want to ask uh, town council how to handle it, how to treat this. You know, what is what Unless is, Nick knows something. Yeah, unless you, that's what I would, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah so, sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, I, I'm, um, I, the way I look at this is it, it's just a it's just a variance on the on the side yard setback but i again i could be wrong and if if you think it's worth reaching out and, and getting council's opinion on it then by all means um well it kind of i mean this doesn't offend me uh because of the you know the house that's already there it's already a small lot it's already got minimal frontage uh, so, and it's apparently by special permit so it doesn't I'm not saying that we want to turn down the applicant for this slight extension i just want to know how to handle it correctly under the bylaw. Okay. Uh, council's not with us yet, I don't think. I don't see her. Girls, if you're done, please clean it up. Thanks, Rensman. I'm sorry, who is that? <laughs> I think this is Joe Dusky at 19 Way. I don't have the, the paperwork, but I have some paperwork. And I, the whole building, the whole community was built in 99. And I do remember reading it was by a special permit and there was some conditions. And part of the conditions was, there's roughly like, and they quote me, um, I didn't bring this up. I wasn't prepared. I didn't realize Cody was coming up tonight. Um, but I think there's something like 36 acres that is undeveloped, and that was part of the trade off for the special permit. It's, okay. um, Can you uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Joe Dubsky, it's nine Keen Way. Keen Way? Correct. Spell your last name D U B S K Y. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you for the information. Town Council's not with us yet. Uh, to the applicant, Mr. Ms. Uh, Thompson, 
I think I have to consult with town council to ask how to uh, handle this. I'm not, I'm not uh, looking at the application negatively. It's just that a pre-existing non-conforming use had to be in place before 1977 or 74, the institution of zoning. Clearly this was permitted. I just want to know um, how to consider it and what to squeeze it under. Members, do you agree? Uh, I do, Mr. Chair. I guess I, I think what I'm a little confused is I'm, I'm almost thinking that this is actually, because I live in one myself, it sounds very similar to my neighborhood where it's, it's actually a cluster development. Yeah. Um, and that's where the minimum 15 feet comes in, side yard. Um, okay. And because I actually thought in my neighborhood it was 20, but nonetheless. Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Well, I think we have to, let me ask Nick. Nick, can you look into special permit number 253 or maybe Nicole? I already found it, Tom. It is, it's special permit 253, but is Kensington Road near this? Because it's listed as a Kensington Road for me. But it is listed as a cluster development from um, what was it, nineteen ninety six? Okay. So yes, it's the K's, the day, all the K's neighborhoods. So um, Kensington and Knollwood, and and there's a bunch of streets Kingsley. in the front of the division, and then Keith is the street that comes off the back of the division, and Keene is one of the bump outs. So yes, it's part of that larger development. Yeah, Ken's Keith. Keith adjoins or uh, breaks off where Kingsley and Kensington. So King, you turn on to Kings and uh, Kingsley off of uh, Newland. Okay. And then it turns as it turns, it turns into Kensington, and right there is where Keith starts. I'm going to ask the um, I'm going to ask the board uh, if they agree that we should continue this to the May meeting so that we can have the special permit uh, take a look at that. Um, and also uh, just ask council how that works. It was obviously permitted, I'm not doubting that, but it's also not a pre-existing use. So maybe we don't even look at 1.5e, but I'm not sure and I don't wanna, I don't wanna do something that's uh, not gonna hold. Do you, do you agree, uh, David, Jim? Yeah, I think we gotta clarify this. Um... Is there a motion then to continue this to May 12th at say 705? I'll make a motion. Can I have a second that motion? To this debate, 12, that's 705. 705, okay. Uh, there's been a motion made and seconded. To the applicants, we just want to get some guidance on this um, uh, because we're not sure how it works. We'd ask you to come back at uh, uh, next meeting is May 12th, um, and we'll schedule you at 705 p.m. Uh, we have the special permit, obviously, in the town hall files. Uh, but I've not come across this before, and I just uh, want to take a look at it and ask uh, our uh, town legal counsel um, how to do this. Um, Mr. Tenori, how do you vote on the motion to continue? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wren? Yes. And Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Uh, Mr. Ms. Thompson, uh, we'll see you in a few weeks on May 12th. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and Nicole and Nick, we can, um, Nicole can put it in the box for us all to take a look at. Um, I don't think I've ever encountered that before, though, where the pre existence was due to a special permit. All right, let's put that aside as well. Next on the agenda. Property address is 253 Mansfield Ave. Continued public hearing on the 40B comprehensive permit application to construct a 60 unit uh, rental apartment building, <clears throat> including 15 affordable housing units at 253 Mansfield Ave. Uh, is next on the agenda. I see we have the applicant uh, participants with us and Mr. D. Giuseppe has joined us as well. Um, we are expecting town council to join us, uh, but she's not here yet. Uh, not necessary to proceed with the application right now, but we have a couple of questions for town council, Paul. Um, you've been away, Paul, and we have all these legal questions, so we'll get to those after. Um, can we, uh, Paul, uh, the applicant has submitted a new proposed um, decision, correct? 
Yes, uh, at, at your last meeting, it was agreed that the applicant would draft the original uh, decision. Uh, it was, um, we had provided the, uh, the previous decision or the decision for 195 that they used as a template. Yep. And it was provided uh, by the applicant late last week. Yep. Along with the updated plans. Along with updated plans. Okay. Then um, I had I printed out a copy of the proposed uh, decision, uh, which of course assumes you know a positive vote naturally. Um, we can go through that, uh, but first I'd like to ask the applicant to verbally update us as to anything that might have changed since the last meeting. Uh, would that be uh, Mr. Haverty or Ms. Sweet or Mr. Kim? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Lynn Sweet, LDS Consulting Group in Wellesley. Go right ahead. And if you want to point us to things in the either new plans or in the decision itself as to what's changed, first of all. Sure. So um, we have with us tonight um, Cameron Campbell from um, Decel Burke, et cetera. And he has provided an updated site plan as well as a, um, I believe, a stormwater management plan which we briefly talked about at the last hearing and it was the result of the soil testing so he would be happy to walk you through those changes and then um, paul and i will be happy to speak to you about the decision we, we did find a few typos after we submitted it so we'd like to discuss those as well yeah we and i have not had a chance to look through it we got it on monday a member started on monday and I think also I see Conservation Commissioner has has added some comments as well. Um, yep, yep, we don't a, have any. That's a different, or you don't have a problem with Conservation's comments? No, we we just, we probably have five or six that Paul and I want to run through when you're ready to go through them, but we just didn't know if you wanted to hear from Cameron about the yeah. changes. So I think that's the best way to do it. On that. We have the problem is we have two versions of the decision now. One has conservation's comments and only conservation's comments, and I think the other one has Paul's comments from Friday. Okay, we don't. I don't believe that we have Paul's comments. We do have conservation's comments. Okay. Yeah, I, I had just I had just finalized them today, and uh, oh. yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. It wasn't from Friday then. It was. But in any event, we can we can do that after. Um, I'm just pointing out that there are two. Um, two All right, we'll just we'll up. just go through each paragraph, you know, when when it's time. Uh, go ahead. To the extent it's Mr. Campbell, uh, Cameron Campbell, go right ahead. Thanks. Thanks, Cameron Campbell. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen to make it easier. Uh, Please do. So. Here is the proposed uh, proposed utility plan, and all that has changed. We uh, we discussed the emergency access, I believe, last time we were here. Yes. Along, and then all that has changed is the infiltration system in the back has increased in size slightly to handle the stormwater a little bit better due to the uh, soils we found on site. And we got rid of the infiltration system out front because of uh, high groundwater. And we installed a tree filter at this corner, which will collect the stormwater and treat it before it is released into the uh town system and i believe that's all that's really changed since last time you have seen it okay there's just there we added a catch basin at the at the end of the uh fire access road to collect the all of the runoff coming from the pavement on the fire access, which we were not doing before. And so now we're collecting, I believe, 98% of the impervious surface on site and, and putting it in, into the ground as infiltration. 
Okay, uh, were there other discussions with the fire department since the last meeting? I have some notes here. Was that to take place or had that already taken place? I'm not clear. I, I think those already took place. They took place before the last, um, oh. the last hearing. Got it. And we do, I believe we have our, um, a meeting with the conservation commission in the next, in the next week or so, um, could be two weeks. Okay. And what is, uh, for discussion at that meeting just generally? Uh, the, the new, the new plans, um, basically these, these were a result of the comments from the peer reviewer of the conservation commission, the soil testing. Okay, I'll assume that doesn't impact us. Right, and in fact, I think they were also had mentioned that they were going to be drafting up the order as well for for the meeting. So we we took that as a positive sign. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other changes to tell us about? Uh, not, no, not really. Uh, that is all we really changed from last time that you saw the plan. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Campbell. Then uh, the draft decision members, it's in the uh, drop box, but again, there are two, um, there are two versions of that. One has some Paul comments and one has some conservation comments that I think just came back today. So I haven't integrated those two. They're pretty minor in each one, uh, but Ms. Sweet, did you want to take us through this? Uh, sure. I think what I can do is I can, I'm going to share my screen that has comments from Jennifer and a couple of highlights from, um, of, of things that we picked up today with our client. Sure. Um, so I'll share my screen, but I'm actually going to let Paul do the talking because this is more of, um, his, his area, um, of expertise. And I, I don't know if you want to just go us to go through each paragraph and you, you know we can each um, say whether or not they're you know their comments. Well, why don't we go to the comments first that you have from either conservation or from Paul? And okay. you can. Well, I don't I don't have Paul's, but I can I can go through our few things if you want. Sure. Yes. So conservation um, under twenty one um, wanted to add in the word sediment, which we don't have an issue with. Um. Paul, I'm going to have you speak to this about 25. Okay. Um, the finding about a requirement for open space and no activity within 25 feet of a wetland for the CONCOM policy as a local concern. Um, it, that's really an, an issue if the board wants to make that as a finding. Um, I, I, it's not necessary. For the board to make as a finding, there's no requirement that you make it. And so, I'm sorry, you wrote this in and Jennifer is asking? Correct. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look at that. I don't know where that comes from, so I, I'm going to have to uh, take that, you know, under consideration as I read through this. Okay, go ahead. We, uh, we found a typo under A4 that we need to have the words um, 106, 100 and taken out. We are, we are 60 units. That's comforting. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That'd be a good way to slip it in there though, right? Get a skyscraper. True, true. It would it's, so it's, really it's, match the plans that we submitted though, so that's not very effective. It would run into trouble at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, under G6, um, we don't know whether generator backup is required. Um, by I think this was a leftover from an age-restricted yeah. development that, that did require the emergency generator for elevators, but I don't believe it's... I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to ask the uh, the fire department what they know of this as a requirement. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we we don't think that there's a building code requirement. So either we can take it out or we can say per building code, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Nick, do you have any knowledge of that? 
I draw a Mr. Chairman, but I will certainly look that up. And, and if it is in the code, I can cite the code for them and, and, um, and we can go from there with it. I would think the fire department would would know something about that too, you know, what they require typically. I mean, there aren't a lot of elevators in town of Norton. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I live in an elevator built in, in a condo in Chestnut Hill. We, we don't have a backup generator, but we have two awesome stairwells. <laughs> yeah, right. I think the fire department um, on this, Mr. Chair, um, and get you an answer. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, so we were just flagging um, on H4 here that the building already does have water and in, 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 in sewer service and um, um, but you know we we obviously recognize that it, it does need to meet um, you know the, the the needs of of the fire department so I, I don't I don't think we're gonna I don't I, I think this is fine yeah I don't think there's a need to make any change to this condition okay. is there uh, have you discussed with water and sewer the um, service requirements, volumes? I'm gonna turn to um, Jim and Anthony, to, uh, not Jim or, or Cameron, um, one of the engineers to answer I, that question. I can answer that. Um, the, um, the water sizes domestic and fire <clears throat> is usually determined by the, um, the fire protection engineers. So that'll come along with the construction docks. Um, as far as what we have on site, there are two lines of current domestic and fire, which um, I'm pretty sure we can utilize depending on what they call for the number of fixtures, based on the number of fixtures and the sprinkler load. Yeah, but is what's there, is the hookup adequate now or do you have to upgrade that? I'm forgetting. So we won't, we won't know for sure until the total fixtures count and those engineers get involved during the uh, construction design process. Hmm. Okay. So, so we'll know the sizes at that point. I'm assuming at least one will be able to be used, um, but uh, we won't know that for certain until that uh, we get to that part. Okay. This condition requires this issue to be addressed as part of the submittal of the final plans. So no yes. construction will be allowed to proceed until this has been addressed. What discussions have there been with water and sewer, if any, uh, over any issue? And so we, we've sent them the uh, revised plan, but we haven't heard back from them yet. Okay. Right. The, the, we sort of had a chicken and egg problem with them where they didn't want to look at, at it until the plans were final. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have sent them the plans and we're waiting to see if they want to meet. Okay. Is there any... Um, requested waiver of uh, fees, water and sewer fees? No. Okay, go ahead. Members, please jump in if you have questions along the way. So um, these were some comments um, from Jennifer. Um, I did just send her our lighting plan and our landscape plan. I wasn't sure if she had them. Um, but I don't, I don't think, and, and Paul can jump in, I don't think we have any issues if you want to <coughs> in for dark sky compliant. But other than that, I think she's um, just asking for some clarifications of language. Okay. Yeah, we, I mean, we certainly wouldn't have any qualms, including a condition requiring lighting to be dark sky compliance. Um, you know, we have submitted landscaping plans. If the board is satisfied with those plans, then I don't think there's a need for any additional conditions. And if the board wants to see something beyond what we have submitted, then maybe we do need to discuss uh, discuss potential conditions. Did uh, Jennifer add 15 or 1.5? Um, we must have had um, dumping of snow must have already been in there. But the numbering's off, so we, I mean, we can adjust that going forward. Yeah, 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 and that, that's not an issue. Is that her change though? Snow shall be stored? It, yes. Yeah, and you know, obviously in looking at this, there's going to be a whole separate order of conditions that is going to outline everything that we need to, do to comply with. Um, DEP and uh, the Wetland Protection Act. Okay. Um, so yeah, most like I said, we don't have any any issues with with the dates, mm -hmm. um, basic changes. Um, 
uh, we found um, J8 and J9 uh, were, were left over and, and those should probably come out. Um, we, we don't have laundry facilities. That's why, you know, again, the thought is it might have been from a, another permit that had um, senior housing on it. And, and it was along Salem Street. Yeah, and we don't, yeah, it was on Salem Street. We don't know what town, but, you know. <laughs> so we're hoping oh. J8 J, and J9 can come out. And, and that's, um, that's our comments. Um, happy to hear um, what comments Paul has, and I can scroll to, to those sections if you want, or, I, or Paul can share his screen. Lynn, okay. you, um, Ms. Sweet, I just had a quick question. Um, eight, I, I'm sorry, going way back to the beginning, A4, with the number of units, I, think, you know, I was just a little confused. Uh, oh, A4. Um, I think that's what you said. It was, a, I think, a, uh, a typo, but then I... Yeah, it said 160, but it's supposed to be 60. Oh, 160. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the project consists of oh, 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 three rental units. So. Oh, okay, okay. I was yeah. looking at 102, and I was, okay. <laughs> but no, I, so, if I understand that correctly, it's 60 rental units, which means you could have two bedrooms in most units, and then two units could have three. I guess you did a 102 bedrooms. Um, I, I, can, I can go back and look. I can go back and look at the bedroom six, count. At least six of the units would have to be three bedrooms because it's a 10% requirement. Yeah, oh, and I, th I think oh, we okay. did have six. But yeah. then you balance it all out. You end up with 102 somehow. Okay. Yeah, okay. You, I, I can, I can um, send a breakdown of uh, how many, you know, one, two, and three, and then sort of a multiple of the bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see now. I, I was just confused. I thought, I thought you meant the 102 was a problem. I was like, I don't understand why that's wrong, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's, it's, that's why we have many people reading this. Many yeah. people. Yeah. Let me like, scroll to the like bottom. This. Again, sure. I think it was done again. If you could scroll to the bottom of this, I think it, you wrote, it was written again, 106. Scroll all the way to the bottom. To the, of, of the permit? Right above the, where it's, the signatures are. Oh, oh right up, up a little bit. Right there, hold on. Uh, yeah, you're right, right, right here. here. Yeah. Okay. All well, right, we got, that's, yeah, we okay, don't, you're right. Good. That's that's good. I mean, obviously, that has to be edited, and uh, we have to go through this. Uh, yeah. So there's opportunity to edit, so that's good. Uh, but I would like the bedroom breakdown, the number of bedrooms yep. in each unit, number of units, that sort of thing. Yep, I will make sure that we get that to you. So um, I don't know how it. this compares to what we had for the last decision in terms of language or setup. I just haven't put them yeah. aside. Did you use the... Or we we used your template, and, and the only thing we really took out was, like, there was a lot of language about something like a turtle. Like, there must have been some endangered species with the other decision, or does that sound familiar at all? From an early, early decision. I mean, a long time ago. Yeah, so we took a lot of the CONCOM sort of endangered species turtle stuff out because we know that we're hopefully going to be getting an order of conditions that will cover that, and we're not... Thank goodness we're not aware of any um, issues on, on our site. I don't know if that was in our decision before. It might have been in CONCOM uh, portion. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. or I don't, you know, Chris's um, associate, I mean, um, Paul's associate worked on it. So we, we, we but we used your base. Um, I suppose the other thing we could do is we could do a compare for you if you think that would be helpful. No, I don't know if that would be helpful. I don't know which document you were using. Was it the 195 Mansfield Ave coverage yes. permit? Yes. Oh, this doesn't look like it. That's why I, I was asking. We oh, use whatever whatever Paul sent us. A lot of the decisions that I read. I represent a lot of boards in 40B developments. So I've got a large number of drafted you know, decisions. Yeah. Um, so this sort of evolved from some of those. Okay. With the cross reference to the 195 units build. Yeah. Okay. I don't think this is my decision because otherwise I'm pretty sure we didn't call it Salem Streets. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think what makes sense next is to have Paul go over his suggested changes. Paul, are you prepared to do that? Sure. And mine were are pretty minor, but yeah. and Chair, I do want to point out that town council is here at you know at, at your request. So uh, I can just quickly share my screen and I'll go through mine. 
That would be good. And then uh, we can talk about what comes next in the process, obviously reading these over. Um, do we have to uh, following me around? We were on a meeting earlier tonight. Sorry? So I was on a meeting earlier tonight with town council as well. Oh, with uh, Amy? Yes. So, Chair, uh, to one aspect of your, your question about the comparison with 195, remember you had, uh, you had made, you had, the board had voted on the waivers, the, the uh, site control, whether the PEL satisfies, uh, I'm trying to read my notes here, but. Yeah, the separate votes. I need, I need to move my sessions. screen. Well, this isn't really working, but so uh, this is probably more of a, you know, if, if you want to be consistent with what you just did with 195, there were about four or five uh, votes on individual things such as uh, uh, on the site control, the jurisdictional requirements, the findings. And if you want, you could, we could add those like we did with 195. I thought that was the standard uh, of what was required and what, what we did. I, I didn't know that was optional. We usually take votes on individual sections, right? That's what you're saying, Paul? Well, we did with 195. So okay. if be consistent then. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would be consistent in that as okay. well here. Um, do we still have services of our consultant or not? We do, Judy. Uh, she she can be available tonight. She's uh, like everyone else nowadays on another Zoom call. Uh, she does have this draft. Okay. Well, I guess I need to. We need to talk about who's going to you know incorporate these changes and whether Judy's going to take a look at it. Uh, Amy, eventually, I want to take a look at it. Uh, right. Make sure it covers everything, but. Um, um, you know, I guess it's you and um, and Judy at this point. Right. And if you want, we can, I, I can certainly work on making the edits that you all would like. Okay. That sounds good. Go ahead. Go through these. Uh, okay. These yeah. are just, some, I, and these, I'll have to run these through with Lynn. These are, again, all minor, but I know it's mentioned CrossFit gym, and I thought that's closed. I think. Yeah, I think you're right about. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah, we could go again. These are. Let me just keep scrolling down. Sure. Some of these are. Just simple grammatical correction, sure. but uh, we should point out the town does not have uh, a housing production plan. Okay. So um, hopefully, at some point, we will. Uh, I think my math is a little different on the ratio. Uh, the parking ratio in 17. Okay, we'll take little, a look. A little higher. Um, that's just... Just grammar, okay. Just grammar. Um, again, small thing, but rather than say zoning administrator, but the zoning administrator here is the building commissioner. So we should... Sorry about that. Of course, I was waiting for that call all night, and they call now. <laughs> Impeccable timing. Not when I was just having to listen in on another call. Um, <laughs> you know, I waited three hours for it, but you know, I just learned today how to yesterday how to silence my phone here because every time I have a court hearing, somebody calls me, and I didn't know <laughs> I had to lift up the receiver and keep putting it down. And I finally took the time to research. There's a do not disturb button on it. So, and I just learned how to shut it off. Yeah, and I sh I shut it off just so I could get their call. But of course, my timing is always perfect. I'll try doing a bucket of water. See what happens to the phone. It'll probably silence it. But no. Nah. Again, I, so I, far I, so far I'm not seeing anything that's objectionable. Right, right. You're right. making right. it too easy. Well, well don't, don't challenge me now. No, there's one, <laughs> a couple of uh, the same conditions. Thing. There were a couple of conditions that we would, uh, you know, we put in on the other. Here's one mm -hmm. um, that the applicant shall be responsible for accomplishing the required construction work on the project in a manner to effectively minimize and control water pollution caused uh, by soil erosion. This was one that we had put in the other in the 195. So it's just essentially 
putting the responsibility on the, the, the developer and the contractor if there's a if there's you know erosion issues that seep into uh okay. the wetland area and that's an yeah and this will definitely be spelled out in more detail yeah there'll, there'll probably be somewhat of a construction management plan i would think and, and this this other one again this was this was pulled right from the other one as well that this is, this protects this ensures that if there's a uh, damage uh during construction to adjacent properties that it is the responsibility of the applicant to make those repairs it's not on the town uh, uh this again came right from the other language so I'll, I'll send this to you all tonight this is what i have already though paul can you is is, is it for in the public way no adjoining property adjoining properties okay. Yeah, I'll let Paul come I thought that, yeah. that would sort of be. And, and, and this is a standard. That a legal requirement anyway, if you call uh, someone else's property. And this is also a standard condition we put in uh, mm -hmm. on special permits and site plans. And so it's to protect the adjacent property owners. Okay. Uh, migration or anything like that. You can take a look at it and you know, yeah. talk about it next time. Yeah, J.9, J. J. Is, that, is that accurate? Is there going to be a bus shelter? I thought the other said. Yeah, no, 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 we're, that, we're, that getting, we're getting it, rid right? of eight. And J9, you are going to get deleted. Those are leftovers from a different decision. There's yeah. Not I, a, there's not a bus shelter here. Oh, this is, oh, this is the same doc. I'm sorry. Same document. Right? Okay, sorry. <laughs> same document, different editor. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got you. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I can take, um, if Paul sends it to me, I can kind of consolidate no. everyone's comments and do one red line and then one clean. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Um, could you, can that be done in the next few days so that we can get it back and, uh, no, I know. Here's, Abs here's, ab for you, absolutely. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. The, the issue is, I, you know, we just got this, obviously, and it's not sure. criticism of anybody, but I take the time to read it through and make yep. notes. Yep, and yep, yep. I want to be able to do that by the next meeting, you know, to have some substantive you know, why is this here? Why is this not here? Can we yeah. add this? That sort of thing. Nothing, I don't think it's going to be shocking, but I haven't had time to do that. And I think Paul is, this is just a first run at his, uh, you know, with his um, keyboard. Okay, no. Come on. I would like Judy to, Judy Barrett to chime in if she's going to be involved, Paul, but the time is, you know, now it's the next right. few weeks. So Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that the, the 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 language around the affordability for you know for what it's worth, you know, co you know, coming from me or, or, or coming from our attorney, is pretty standard on uh, you know the um, the local preference and you know all of that, and it, it's you know so hope okay. Judy will agree with that. Was there anything further? Except to more than the affordability piece of the decision. I'm sorry, I keep stepping on everybody. Um, was there anything else that was being peer reviewed or being changed and then peer reviewed? I just don't recall. No, not on our end. And in fact, Pat Brennan uh, emailed me today that he didn't have any comments. Uh, okay. he, he's seen everything. He saw the revised plans and he was fine with them. Okay. And there weren't any traffic. The traffic had been addressed a few months ago. Yep. Uh, so members, do you have specific questions? Anything further right now? No, I don't I would, have anything. I would ask that you each read through, you know, as best we can um, when our eyes are wide open and uh, just take some notes and some questions so we can, um, you know, make progress on this, on the decision, on a draft decision, um, you know, before and at the next meeting. Uh, agreed? Are we at that? Agreed. Um, Paul, is your, is, your, is your version of your notes, is it in the Dropbox? I, I couldn't find it. But, uh. It is. I put it in later today. I had finished it, but um, I can coordinate with Lynn. I sent. I just sent my version to her. We can just combine our comments yeah. with a, a new document and just send it out to you. Okay. Yeah, I just couldn't find it, so, but I'll take it. I was going to say, I, it, it. I don't see it. I'm going to check my junk email real quick. I said Dropbox before. I might have gotten an email from Paul today or yesterday. I just don't recall. I just saved it and opened it up and looked through it quickly and printed out his comments. That's all. And I might have said Dropbox when it wasn't there. I don't know, Dave. 
Uh, yeah. I, I can't find it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. But Paul, <laughs> well, well, did you hit send? I believe I did. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it. That's okay. We'll we'll get we'll we'll figure it out. We will figure funny. it out. Suspended Paul's account. <laughs> Now and I don't see anything in my junk, so um, we can we can get this done. That's why I was asking, you know, if we could get some coordinated draft in the next few days and go go on that uh, to work on that, uh, so that we're not all doing the drafts separately. Uh, okay, um, is there anything else that we can make progress on tonight? Then I neither want to put this off unnecessarily or or take time tonight to do things that we should be doing, you know, off meeting, looking at, looking at this. So please uh, guide me if you'd like. But I think, this, I think this has been terrific. We're, I'm happy to get you out a, um, a red line of, of the comments we've gotten. And so the and next, next hearing is uh, May 12th. Is that fine for the applicant? So I am not available on the 12th. Um, I can have my associate. That's our next schedule. I'm meeting. good on the 12th. Okay. And I did want to thank you again for accommodating our, our time needs tonight. We are very appreciative. Okay. We've had full agendas. I'm not sure what's going on in town, but everybody wants to go before the zoning board. Maybe it's Paul. Uh, <laughs> don't know. You guys are just popular. What's that? So you're just popular. Yeah. It's 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 it always happens in the spring. Every you know people want to start developing, and then they realize something's something's come up, and they can't do it. Just usually, it's, I think it's, I think it's, it's all Nick. Ever since Nick came on board, Nick, it could yeah, be, could be. Ever since Nick, ever since well, Nick stepped up, it's been that. They know he's he's a lot easier than the previous guy. Why is everybody going to blame anything on me? I'm not doing anything. I'm keeping my mouth. <laughs> That's why we're putting it on you. You just talk to that. I don't know. Okay. Um, is there a motion, members, then, to continue to May 12 at, I don't know, 7, 10, I think, uh, was the next uh, meeting slot. I don't know what else we have for May, aside from the two we continue. But. I'll make that. I'll make a motion to continue 253 Mansfield Avenue to 7, 10 p.m. on May 12th. Sure. I'll second. Okay. A um, motion's been made and seconded. Mr. Wren, roll call. Yes. Mr. Tenori. Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Okay, thank you, uh, applicant and representatives. We'll see you in a few weeks. Um, and uh, let's everybody go to work on the draft and uh, see what we can do with it to push it forward. Okay? Thank, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman and board members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I see Amy Quessel is with us. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, wonderful. That's a lie. <laughs> so I have we a couple of new questions developed, Amy, that we were I guess we're gonna ask you in executive session. Uh, we have on the agenda item executive session. Uh, but because we're in remote posture, I think we have to decide to go into executive session and not to come back to public session so as not to have to restart. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I would go into executive session and not go back into open. Okay. So before we do that, are there bills and wants to be? <laughs> Sorry, somebody's microphone is on. Okay. Um, are there any bills or warrants? I don't hear Nicole speaking up. Um, Sorry, I'm here, Tom. Sorry, I was just opening it. Yeah, I think I put some in Dropbox. There's the two Amory bills and then the sole signature for, for warrants. Uh, the sole signature paper. I didn't see any bills in there, but... There's two the two Amory bills, which I emailed to you separately just ahead of time, so you had them. Great. Um, um, well, I don't have them, but we could do... <laughs> Amy explained to us and gave a form. We can apparently appoint one of us to go over bills. Amy, is that right? And and administratively do it? Um, no, um, it it has nothing to do with. <laughs> I'm has, adding a thousand. You're, you're doing great. 
uh, it has nothing to do with the zoning board of appeals. So it, it really, it's, it's um, however town hall allows you to do it. So however the treasurer's office um, allows bills to be paid is, is it. Um, usually it's the chairman approves the bills, um, but there, there's no, unless, unless the treasurer's office has a set form or a set way to do it. Within the statute, there's nothing, it's silent um, with regard to the zoning board of appeals. The planning board can motion, um, they, can do, they can appoint a signatory for plans um, and that, that I've provided documents on, that I've provided a, a sample vote and everything on, but that has nothing to do with the zoning board with regard to internal bills. So do we know how uh, treasurer requires us to approve bills? I don't have any idea. They always came before us and we raised them and voted on them at a meeting. So, so Tom, if they, if you have a, a policy letter that Nicole has drafted up and it's signed, they'll accept it. <laughs> okay. That's, so, that's their biggest thing. They just want a document that, that yeah. says that you or whomever is, is the, uh, it, we usually would have a sole, you know, an individual yeah. or, or, uh, and an alternate in case you're away. So but it helps us that? a lot. It helps us speed up payment for services or bills. Yeah. Do we have that document that you can post on screen or no? It's in the Dropbox. Great. It's on, it's on the bills. I'm looking at. Okay. Then I apparently didn't open up the right folder. I can, I'll share it. They're all gone. Well, I've got it. Here's bills. What do you know? I've got it um, on my screen. And this was taken from the language we used for planning board. Hey, Paul, Alan's on there. Is that a problem? Because he's no longer, or does that I not run that? I would say as he doesn't, as, if he doesn't sign it, that's fine. Okay. I mean, this just happened to cross over during the time that he got appointed to or elected to a planning board. Okay. So we just have to vote on this, Amy, is that right? Yes. Okay. So you want me to take this uh, to appoint me as the designee to sign all warrants? I, I guess a warrant is to approve a bill? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, that's, the, uh, that, that's the document you always sign is the warrant. Okay. Uh, I will, I will move that I be appointed the uh, designee to sign all warrants. Uh, who wants to be the uh, alternate? David, you may be the more available uh, person between you and Jim. That's just a suggestion. Uh, well, sure, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Don't do that, Jim. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I guess I'm just, I'm just a tad confused. Like, what is, what's, what's changing from how we, well, other than having a second person, is anything changing? Yeah, we don't. You don't need a vote of the board. You just. Oh, oh, you, oh, I see. Oh, you just, okay. I see. You just send Paul an email. Oh, I get you. Yeah. So, so we would, so would just have you a lot quicker. Yeah, you would just either we'd come to you or you'd come to town hall. I got you. I can send you an email and get approved. Gotcha. Yeah. I got you. Okay, no, that's fine. Gotcha. Thank you. So, is there a motion to appoint me as the designee and um, uh, David Wren as the alternate designee to sign warrants? I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. All right. Um, any discussion? Um, Mr. Um, Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Wren, how do you vote? I, I vote yes. Okay. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. So I guess I just have to fill this out and then circulate it, Amy? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Circulated for signature. I'll just mail yeah. it to. I'll mail it to um, Jim, and then Jim mail it to David, or vice versa. You can also. Um, you don't need to have. Uh, you can sign in counterparts. Oh, I okay. mean, I mean, Paul and Nicole. You can check with the treasurer's office, but I'm sure they'll allow 
counterpart signatures where they just staple it all together. That would yeah. be good. They don't, right. allow, they don't allow PDF signatures, so. Oh, well, okay, then you better check first. <laughs> no, no, they, they will, I mean, that's a great point. They will accept, uh, it, it, you can, if you all want to just print that out and sign it, okay. you're good. Why don't they, we fill, they just want original signatures. Why don't we fill it out? We'll, let's fill one out tomorrow morning with the names typed in, and then um, we can circulate that to be signed. How's that? So it's not all different forms that somebody questions. Right. Okay, great. Great. So now we don't have to do the other two bills, right? You don't. Yeah. We can take care of them administratively. Um, I did have uh, a couple of minutes. I'm sorry to keep Amy waiting, but we have this other business to attend to before we adjourn. Um, I sent uh, minutes. Did the members receive them? If you did not, um, that's fine. We can put them off till the next meeting. Uh, minutes from the February meeting and minutes from the March executive session, which we can't talk about, uh, but I, I emailed them to you. They're not for public distribution. You have the February meeting minutes? Yes, I read those. I read those at lunch. But I, oh. I'm fine. Entertaining, weren't they? They were. I don't took a nap afterwards. <laughs> Jim, uh, anybody I, want to make I a reviewed them. I'm good. Anybody want to make a motion to approve the February 17 meeting minutes as, as submitted and edited? I will make the motion to accept the February 17th meeting minutes. I will second. Mr. Wren, how do you vote? I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tenore, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Thank you. I will submit the originals, not a PDF, the originals because somebody doesn't accept PDFs in town hall, making my life all that much more difficult. Um, making our lives more difficult. So I think that's the end of our agenda, aside from the executive session, right, Paul? Okay. Correct. I, once we get that warrant thing signed, um, I will just do the other bills and uh, send them to you. Yeah, but we can get that done in the next day if everyone can sign and PDF it back. Um, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, this quick question. Did we, uh, I can't, I wasn't at this meeting, but are you supposed to get a, um, a vote on the executive session minutes? I don't, I don't know that we have to vote on minutes anyway. I think that's a um, formality that we don't need to follow. Is that right, Amy? No, I had sent you the email with executive session minutes. Yes, the chair decides if they are going to be released or not, you can vote to decide if they're going to be released. Sorry, the question wasn't to release them. The question was to approve minutes that were typed so, up. So we have, we usually once, they're them. once they're released, they can be re approved in an open session. Oh. I assume they were confidential from the get-go because they're kept as confidential until until right until the case is over until they until there no until there's no need for them to be confidential anymore. So for example, if the litigation ends, okay. There no there's no need for them to be confidential anymore. And so then um, they can be they can be taken off the disclosed list, for example, and then they can be voted on. Um, and then they would just go wherever, where all the other minutes go. Um, if you get a public records request for executive session minutes, you then have to go into executive session to determine if they can be released or not. Yeah. Um, and they can, they, you know, even if you determine that the litigation is over or the reason for the executive session is over, you still have to then determine if they need to be confidential based on attorney client privilege, et cetera, things okay. like that. At the last meeting, we had an executive session for some minutes from 2006 through 2008 on a matter that tonight we took a vote to deny a variance on, if that if you can follow yeah, that. Right. And, but you guys determined that there was executive session, um, there was executive session privilege. I mean, um, I'm sorry, attorney client privilege in those minutes. Yes. So, uh, well, so, what I would suggest is that um, the minutes from executive session follow the statute exactly, which means that you all you have to do is state the members that were there, the votes that were taken, and the subjects that were discussed. 
and therefore you can almost you know you could then you could then release min you could release the minutes because you wouldn't have executive you wouldn't have attorney client privilege yeah. in them i don't know and sometimes that's hard i i get that because because i i usually see you guys in <sighs> executive section <laughs> so so my question is i think something different i said uh, minutes that I typed up for this last executive session from a month ago. Mm -hmm. I just tried to ask, I can submit those or should I put those to a vote of the board right now to accept as accurate minutes? Do they have any, are they, are they pertaining to a, to a case that's in litigation? No. They okay. And do they have any, do they have any executive, I mean, do they have any attorney client privilege um, information in them? I don't believe so, but Please. I thought executive yeah. session was per se privileged so that we didn't release the minutes of executive sessions. I'm, I'm wrong on that? Yeah, executive session minutes are not, they're not, um, they're not withheld forever. Okay, these haven't even been issued or signed yet. So are they held now and we should review them later? I. So I don't think we're talking past each other, but okay. Um, Why don't you send them to me and I'll tell you if you can release them at the next meeting. Okay, we'll do. We'll okay. put that off. Then right now, um, the chair's declaration that there is a matter for discussion at executive session as it concerns a matter presently <clears throat> in uh, which is the matter of uh, Farid versus uh, Town of Norton. Zoning Board of Appeals, Superior Court case 1973-CV-00972-C. Uh, votes may be taken, but the chair declares that uh, uh, in chair's estimation, there is a need for executive session at this time. Uh, we need to uh, have a motion and a vote to go into executive session. And I would suggest a motion to go into executive session to discuss the matter just described with us not to return to public session thereafter, therefore that the recording be stopped, but that we stay on the Zoom call privately without being broadcast or recorded. Is there such a motion? I couldn't do it justice, but I will make that motion. Is there, is there a second? I will motion? second that motion. To go into executive session not to return to public sure. session tonight thereafter. Okay, uh, Mr. Wren, how do you vote on that motion? Oh, yes. Mr. Tenori, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, Mr. Noel votes yes as well, so that at 9.04, effectively, we have adjourned the meeting to go into executive session. Um, so I'd ask now that the recording be stopped